The St. Lucie nuclear plant has pumped power into South Florida. While it was refueling last week, we were given an unheard of exclusive tour inside the facility with our cameras. We found that while the plant is shut down, it is far from idle. This is a rare glimpse inside the nerve center of St. Lucie 1, the control room. And you're watching an operation that few laymen have ever before witnessed the refueling of the reactor. This room is a very busy place right now. These people are directing and monitoring the movement of the fuel back into the core. That's the fuel board. It shows these engineers where each bundle of nuclear rods is located at every moment. Each bundle must be placed in a precise spot inside the pressurized water reactor to be used most efficiently. On a normal day, when the plant is pumping out power, this room would be quiet. Just a couple of engineers at the control panels, checking the buttons, waiting for the flash of warning lights. The operators here call it months of boredom followed by moments of sheer terror. It takes about a week to refuel the reactor. Fuel bundles, some new, some partially used up, are moved from this room, the spent fuel pool, to the reactor core. It was just about a year ago when they were taking the fuel bundles out of the reactor and into this room when the problem that has kept the plant out of commission was discovered. The thermal shield surrounding the core had slipped. Officials decided to remove the 30-ton radioactive shield, the first time this has ever been done in the United States. It took months to cut it into pieces using underwater remote control equipment. But now the plant is going back online. Power company spokesman Hank Buchanan says it's just a matter of... We're testing our steam generators. Many of the systems are being cycled right now. And it's a pre-operational start, much like getting a shuttle ready for a flight. The outside of the reactor almost looks like a huge concrete spacecraft, and we look like space travelers as we prepare to go inside. Everyone must wear protective clothing, coveralls, three pairs of boots, three pairs of gloves, all taped securely in place, and a protective hood. We carry two portable dosimeters that measure our exposure to radiation. Technicians take readings before and after we go inside the reactor containment building, or the can as it's called here. A special shuttle moves plant workers into the dome-shaped structure. One of the massive doors always shut to prevent contamination from escaping. That's the reactor head. Our escort says it's like the top of the tea kettle. It sits over the reactor core when the plant is operating. And down in that pool of clear water is the core itself. Operators of this refueling machine are now moving a bundle of fuel through the water and placing it in position in the core. The plant normally goes through this procedure about once every 18 months. The can looks cluttered now, the aftermath of a year-long repair job that swelled the plant staff several times its normal size and cost the power company an estimated $235 million. When the plant goes back online in early April, if all goes as planned, it will be closing the doors on one of the longest and most expensive shutdowns in Florida history. Anita Boyd, News Source 34, St. Lucie County.